Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by Kaz Grell, who will be double duty this weekend at two different tracks, mind you. Of course, he'll be at IRP in the 02 truck for Young's Motorsports um, in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And he will be in the 48 uh, Chevrolet for Big Machine Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series on the road course at IMS. How's it going, Cass? <laughs> going well, really well. Obviously, you got quite the weekend coming up here, right? Yeah. It, it, I, I, you know, I've known you for a long time. Is this the first time you've done double duty before? I mean, I know you've had in the past, but it's been a while, or at least I think it has been. Yeah, I, I had never done double duty ever before this year. Um, in well, I suppose 2017, I did ARCA and trucks um, at Pocono, but I, I've never done double duty um, in, an, in two national series before this year. This will be my third weekend doing it. I did uh, double duty trucks and Xfinity at Las Vegas early in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the truck race and the cup race at Coda. Uh, and then this will definitely be my first time doing double duty at two different racetracks in the same weekend. So, uh, that's exciting. It's going to be really busy and hectic going back and forth. Um, not to mention there are two new racetracks to me. I've never been to IRP before, never even seen it. Um, I have seen Indianapolis, but I've never been on the racetrack there before. So two brand new racetracks for me should be, should be a lot to take in, but really fun to do. Okay. So coming into this weekend, Kaz, you know, let, let's start with the trucks at, uh, at, at IRP. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've been on the sim trying to work on that. Of course, you, you've been putting some solid runs together with Young's Motorsports, you know, the top 10 at mid Ohio. Um, it, it going in, going into this race, what's it going to be like going on a, a short track where a lot of guys haven't been on there. I think probably, I think the only two that have been on there is I would think solder and crafting in a truck. I know a lot of the guys have been in, been in, been racing at that track, but that was in an ARCA car. Yeah. A lot of the guys have done it in ARCA or the, you know, the more experienced guys maybe did it in a truck way back when. Um, but I have never been there in ARCA, late models, anything. I'll see it for the first time. And, uh, unfortunately, Young's Motorsports is not one of the race teams that gets access to simulation um, or the simulator. So I, I have not had a single lap at IRP yet. Um, I have done some races there on iRacing before. Um, but of course, it, whether it's iRacing or a manufacturer simulator, none of it ever really truly is the same as when you get there in real life. That, that 50 minute practice session tomorrow will be critical and, and will be the most important thing, no matter who has done what preparation, until it comes time to get your truck out on the real racetrack, you know, uh, every, everything else is just hoping that it correlates. But that tomorrow morning, the practice session, that will correlate. So um, we'll, you know, we'll be trying to get our, our number 02 rutabush.com truck uh, dialed in as quickly as we possibly can. And um, another first for me, uh, I've actually never done a short track with Young's Motorsports. So this will be my first time doing that. I've, I've only done road courses, dirt tracks, um, and then I've, I've done two asphalt ovals with them ever, Las Vegas and Pocono, uh, both super speedways, or well, both speedways, I should say, fast tracks. So I have not done uh, a short track with them yet on asphalt so I'll, I'll get a chance to see what their short track program is like and get a gauge of it feel it out in practice and hopefully know what we've got for for qualifying and for the race it's a one-day show um but we do get a good bit of track time more than usual more than the typical 15 minute practice session so we do get a full 50 minutes to to shake the truck down and learn the track so that's going to be crucial for us and it's one of the and it's one of the tracks that a lot of uh, if you haven't been noticing a lot of a lot of tracks are new were new to the truck series schedule so tracks like Sonoma and Mid Ohio and, and all that so a, a lot of them are brand new so this is another one of those new tracks but what's it going to be like going on a on a short track in a truck? Yeah, it, it, it will be a challenge and going to new tracks um, or going to a track with practice rained out like we learned last week in Pocono really does not 
work in, in Young's Motorsports uh, advantage, because as I mentioned, um, we don't have simulation, which, um, you know, everybody talks about simulation. I feel like most people picture the driver in a simulator practicing. Right. Well, that is a certain part of simulation. That would be driver simulation. But all these teams that have simulation, um, they all also have it for the engineers on the team. So they'll actually be plugging in changes to the race truck or the race car on their computer all day long at the shop, at the racetrack, and seeing how it affects the balance, the, the handling of that race car. They see it right on their computer screen. The driver doesn't need to drive anything. It uses a reference lap um, from a, a historical test session. Um, so the, the vast majority of important simulation when we talk about that in racing is done by the engineers. Um, and so when, when you've got a top team, a, a GMS or a KBM, you know, they're unloading with the setup that they found was going to work the best for them based on their body map, their engine map, their um, dynamic setups. They're unloading exactly what the simulation told them would be best. We're winging it. We're unloading with how, with what we think will be best or what we ended with or what the team ended with the last time they raced at Pocono. Or in this case for uh, Lucas Oil Raceway, kind of guessing at it, you know, uh, our, our, our team is very experienced um, in racing. So they know what to expect and what to unload with, but they don't have the, the resource of simulation to look at and actually get to plug in changes. We don't get to see the effect changes have until we get onto the racetrack for practice. Um, so, you know, when we have a weekend like Pocono where practice is rained out, um, we're at a much, much steeper disadvantage than, than most of the other teams because they already know where their, their splitter height is going to be and what their handling is going to be. We guessed at it. Um, so with that said, that's what this weekend is going to be all about. We do get that 50 minute practice session. I'm crossing my fingers. Nothing happens. No rain, have a nice, clean practice session, get to use all 50 minutes because when we get that opportunity as an organization that absolutely benefits Young's Motorsports. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to take full advantage of that this weekend. Yeah. And of course, after that, you're going to be now something that you're going to have to navigate. You're the only driver that is in the Xfinity race and in the truck race, that's also going to be competing on both courses. So Xfinity does have practice that day on, on Friday as well. So balancing between both, that's going to be, but here's the thing though, the tracks aren't that far away from each other. They aren't, they aren't, but the, the schedule is a little bit of a challenge. I don't know if you looked at it at all, but uh, I'll have truck practice from roughly 1030 to 1130. Nope. Um, and then nothing until Xfinity practice at three o'clock over at the big track. So no problem. I've got time to get over to the racetrack. The challenge is Xfinity practice and qualifying the combined, you know, the, the total run of that session is from three o'clock to four 30. Well, truck qualifying is single truck qualifying from four 30 to five 30. So they, they end and start at the same exact time. So it, it, for somebody watching on TV, they'll be able to just stay, you know, plan it on their couch, switch from, uh, from NBC Sports over to FS1, and there's no delay in Xfinity qualifying and truck qualifying. Well, the tracks are 20 to 25 minutes apart. So I'm going to have to get from one to the other as quickly as possible to try to make it in time. I'm 18th out in the order for truck qualifying, so about halfway uh, through the order. And I am in group B for Xfinity qualifying. And of course, if I happen to make that, that final round in Xfinity qualifying, that'll take me even later over at the big track. So, um, I will have a police escort between the big track and the short track to try to make it there in time uh, and, and minimize the travel time as best that, that we can. Um, so that I hopefully will be able to qualify both vehicles, but uh, that that will be a fun little challenge during the day tomorrow that, that we have to try to sort out. That, that, that's actually an interesting one. I think a lot of a lot of people didn't look at and I did kind of skim at the schedule a little bit. But yeah, it's just you, you don't you don't think about these things because, you know, qualifying at two different tracks, 
yeah, they're kind of close together, but in times you also have to deal with traffic and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's really, really interesting to get from point A to point B in a timely manner. So, yeah, I mean, and if we had just a half hour between sessions, it would be no problem. But it's the fact that, you know, I have to be in two places at once <laughs> is, you know, that's what that's what's going to make it challenging, even though the tracks aren't too far apart. They're far enough apart that it's hard to be at both simultaneously. So um, that should be fun tomorrow, trying to uh, make it back and forth between the two. But then I get to relax once I get back to IRP, hopefully in time to qualify my truck. Then I'll get to sit back, relax, watch the ARCA race at IRP. And then the truck race rolls off right after that uh, on Friday night. So um, the only tight time window there will be between Xfinity qualifying and truck qualifying. Everything else will be no problem. But um, of course, swapping back and forth between a short track oval and a road course in a truck and an Xfinity car, quite a big adjustment. So I'll be trying to juggle making sure that I'm absolutely prepared to the max in each vehicle individually um, and, and be able to, you know, perform at my best in, in both places with them being such different events. Um, but I, I've certainly got plenty of confidence in the Young's Motorsports crew that they're bringing a great truck for this weekend and big machine racing. It, it looks like it is, is bringing great race cars to the racetrack every weekend. So um, I, I feel like I'll, I'll be in a great position in both places and I'll just have to get the job done. Okay, so um, Kaz, what it, just to fill in for um, the people watching this um, and for the audience at home, what is your plan for the rest of the year? I know you're going to be in a, you're going to be in a, some more truck races. You're also going to be in a few and um, at least one more Xfinity race. Yeah, I, I think um, uh, about five more truck races this year. I have with Youngs. Uh, I <clears throat> got the Indy Road Course and Watkins Glen with Big Machine Racing and Xfinity, um, possibly even another race uh, somewhere in there as well with Big Machine Racing. Yeah. Um, so a few more Xfinity starts and uh, the money team racing, of course, is up in the air for, for the cup schedule, just um, whenever they're able to, to nail down sponsorship, we go and race. So that's a bit of a, you know, always a fluid situation whenever we're able to, we do. Uh, so I'm not sure what the next one will be with that, but hopefully we will get back out on track in the number 50 car again this year. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So Kaz, um, I, I know that you, you, this is probably the busiest you've been since you went full-time in trucks with GMS in 17. What has that been like getting, you know, more used to uh, being in the car more often or truck more often now? Well, you know, I had kind of gotten used to that light part-time schedule where I get two weeks or three weeks or four weeks leading into each race to do sim, to iRace, to look over notes and watch video and kind of prepare for the next race that's in three weeks. Whereas now I'm, I may not be full-time, but I'm racing most weekends that I've had very few off weekends so far this year. So I, I do feel like I'm in that rhythm of, racing each weekend and really only having Monday through Thursday each week to prepare for this coming weekend's race. Yeah. Um, so that's just a, a little bit different tempo uh, for my schedule than what I've had over the past few years. But it's a, it's a huge benefit because it, it keeps me fresh in the car and warmed up. There's no more of having to knock the rust off when I first get into the race car uh, like there was the past few years. So uh, I'm, I'm already in the rhythm of things and uh, so it's been really good this year to be busy. And I think this might, this might be my busiest year ever um, because the truck season in 2017, when I ran full time, that was 23 races and I did two ARCA races. I think that put me at 25 total for the year. Um, this year, I think I'm on track. If you count my, my Trans Am races, um, in all three NASCAR divisions, I think I'm going to be right at 25. And if I pick up even one more, I'll be at 26 and that'll officially make it my busiest year yet. So, um, definitely 2022 has been, has been good to me and picking up additional opportunities along the way is really exciting. So, um, hopefully, hopefully I can find even more as, as we go throughout the year and just help to, to position myself even more strongly for, for next year as a candidate for a full-time ride in a series. Cause, um, that is one thing I feel like I've, I've been able to 
take part-time opportunities and impress here and there um, and make headlines um, and, and definitely outperform my equipment or outperform what a part-time driver should be able to do up against full-time teams and drivers. Um, but what we really have never seen since my rookie year in trucks, which it's hard to judge a rookie year in trucks, right? right. Um, we've never really seen what I can do in a full-time ride with a consistent uh, communication with the same crew chief in the same series yes. each week, uh, racing for points to try to be consistent. I I've never had the opportunity other than a single rookie year when I was 18 years old I've never been able to, to show what I can do. And I do think that, that I have a lot more untapped potential that I can show in a full-time season like that. Um, and, I, you know, I've just been waiting and, and looking for the right opportunity to be able to do that and showcase that. And um, I'm, I'm definitely confident in, in my ability to, um, to get the job done. And I just need that, that one other person, that one sponsor, that one, one team owner to kind of take that leap with me and say, okay, let's see what you can do. And I think that I can, I can really um, do a lot with that. So hopefully I'll have that opportunity um, as soon as possible. I say this every year, but hopefully it's next year that I get, that I get to show that um, full time in, in a series. All right. And we'll, uh, we'll look forward to that as well. Kaz Grala, thank you so much for coming on. You got a busy week. You got a busy day tomorrow. Um, good luck at IRP in the trucks and good luck at the IMS road course on Saturday. Thank you.